Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. It was time for Media Monday. Um, uh, today is very special. We got a new deck in the mail. So I figured we could do a little unboxing. So before we even get to that, let's get everybody set up here. All right. And I got a new altar cloth. Isn't it so pretty? <laughs> I'm so excited. So let's take a look. Loud noises, just a warning. All right. Whoa. Whoa. Isn't it beautiful? It's so pretty. Okay. Let's get this busted open. We can go ahead and take a look at this deck. This is the 2.0, by the way. For the embroidered tarot. Woohoo. Um, I figured we could bust this open, take a look at it, and um, interview it for our Media Monday. Especially because this is cross-stitching and tarot. Look at me all fancy. I got an X-Acto knife and all that mess. Who am I? Where did this, where did all these tools come from? This is so holographic. It's messing with the, <laughs> it's messing with the lighting. Oh my goodness. Okay. Let's make sure I put this in here correctly. Put that back. So I don't stab myself. Okay. So first of all, this is pretty as hell. Um, and this is just for the outside. And I really was excited for this because I'm still working on my cross stitch offering for Chunga. Ooh, Ooh this is kind of stiff on this side. says to the fang-hearted descendants of the forest the ones at home in magic and darkness what if a storm awoke within you and crackling said you are both soft and warrior isn't that a thought with mess whispered last mess whispered moss whispered it's the <laughs> the text with moss whispered lashes you sigh. You are moon full, perfect and glowing. Let your wind whipped hair full pull you forward. Be your guide. Because to tread within the forest is to go within yourself and love all that you find there. Love always, Alicia. That was gorgeous. Thank you, Alicia. This is by Alicia May Vamvocacus. I apologize if I butchered your name. So, like always, ooh, pretty back. Look at that. I like to look in the author's notes for decks. So, then the reason I like to go ahead and look through here is because any specific reason why they created the deck, um, will shine in here and will show up in how the cards are displayed. So what she's saying here is she learned embroidery along with the devotional learning of tarot. Um, and she found it hard to pick one over the other in terms of dedicating her time to, so she meshed them both. How awesome is that? Um, this deck you hold before you is two years of daily stitching. Hiya. The dedication, my dude. Okay, she has some typical spreads in here. Well, typical in terms of uh, pagan holidays. This is an M bulk searching candle, Ostara's golden egg, Beltane's power of self love, Litha's sun and shadows, Lama's bountiful basket, Maybon's apple of gratitude. I love Maybon. Sawan Skull, Yule's Evergreen. How great. 
Okay, so she doesn't give pictures, she gives the descriptions, which is fine. Let it be. <laughs> okay, and she does them by suit. Okay, that's gorgeous. And then she acknowledges everyone that has helped her throughout the past year in creating this deck. Her family, her best friend, her brother, her husband. And you. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. So we've got that off to the side. Right there. This pretty little deck. Let's do a flip through. Ew. Ah, look how pretty. Everything is holographic. I love it. This is why I wanted it. <laughs> it looks so nice. You can tell she stitched it even just from the back. Um, zoomed into the back, you can see uh, the grid that was there and they just came in after and added the holographics. Oh, that's pretty. Let me get this out of the, there we go. How pretty. Doll. I have a friend who loves uh, Furrets for uh, the Pokemon. I need to send him this card. And you could tell she made them. I love uh, the handmade quality for these. The Emperor has a monocle versus a flower crown. That's adorable. That's interesting. Hair fan to the seasons. And let's see if we can get this zoomed in a touch more. Just to make it easier to see. This is a beautiful deck. I wonder if it's like the, um, <laughs> cat eyes. Um, like the true black where it's only the majors that are holographic. But we'll see. The, the death card is what I saw everywhere. It's so pretty. Otters, a magpie. You know, the magpie keeps following me around. And this is a, this is probably one of my favorite devil cards. That looks so nice. Ooh, it's got a badger. Ain't that the truth? Ah, oh. and the world. No, it's all of them. They're all holographic. That's wonderful. And it's an egg. See, we were talking this past week <laughs> about Anunky and Kronos and the big crunch. And here we have the world. We have a snake surrounding an egg. Man. <laughs> okay. Okay, bees are the theme for swords, which makes sense. That's really clever because for bees, if they use their sword, if they use their stinger, they'll die. So it's almost like you gotta figure out what's worth using your sword. Huh, okay, and every suit is a different color. So this one's light blue. Wands is foxes, yay! And there's sunflowers. This this suit was made for my daughter. Um, her baby animal was a fox. And um, sunflowers are one of her favorite flowers. This suit was made for her. And it takes on the traditional meanings, or like the traditional depiction of the... Uh, wands. So that's interesting. You'd have to, um, if you want to intuitive do, intuitively do this with uh, positioning of the flowers, you would have to pay attention to the staging, I'm thinking, of uh, which ones are facing the front, which ones are facing the side, that kind of thing. And there's a mirroring here between how the uh, the court cards show up. Swans for cups. I love swans. Swans are actually 
one of my favorite birds. It might be my favorite bird. I think that's a perfect depiction, especially because um, Ugly Duckling comes to mind. This is so nice. Yep, and then it's mirrored with the frame again for the page. That's really pretty. Aw, the baby ducks. How cute! I'm gonna gush over this deck. I'm so excited. I got sent this as a gift. Um, and I just knew it was coming. Oh, and bunnies. Bunnies for pentacles. With daisies. I want to say that's a daisy. <laughs> that's wonderful. And this is perfect for Media Monday because then um, it's a cross between cross stitching and Toro, which I love that that's how she taught herself. She challenged herself, which is wonderful meditation to cross stitch. It's one of my, uh, it's a wonderful way to contemplate things. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, ooh, look at that rainbow. And it's all the way around. Ha! So now what we're gonna do, we gotta back this up a touch, is we are going to uh, interview. So, I made a spread the other day. Me, both me and my husband have used it for um, doing interviews for our newest decks. Okay, and that's that's where it is right there. But let's go ahead and make this a little bigger so you guys didn't see it. And if you want to, with your own decks, I'm more than happy to have you follow along. Here, we're gonna use our paper mate. And I'm gonna draw it out. Okay, so this one is simplified from um, my quick start to reading Taro intuitively challenge. So this is gonna be a little bit of a smaller spread. So we're gonna do our strengths. One, weaknesses, two. I probably should have made this three lines, but whatever. Questions I like questions I don't like the tone of the deck so um, I want to know the voice of the deck and then how you're gonna help me grow as a reader so again that's one strengths two weaknesses questions I like questions I don't like or I would prefer not to ask for this deck or have asked I have the tone of the deck and how uh, you'll help me grow Just to do it real simple and sweet. So, and I have that off to the side here. And let's get to shuffling. We'll see how this shuffles. Now, um, I really started learning Taro after I learned Magic the Gathering. <laughs> so I'm big, I'm not bending my cards. <laughs> um, I don't riffle shuffle. Let's interview this deck. I accidentally put two in that pile. I'm going to go from the bottom. Do, do, do. Mix it up a little bit. Whoa, hello. That jumped out. So which one was that one? The Nine of Swords jumped. So I'm going to write that down. Okay, just to remember that that jumped out while we were 
trying to interview this deck. So we want to know. These are actually pretty easy to shuffle. Uh, they're already bent a little bit. There's already a bow. That kind of makes me a little sad. But it's okay. Whoa. That's okay. Goes down there. Okay. By the way, I hope everyone's having a wonderful day. I don't remember if I said that. <laughs> and if you do like these kinds of videos, please be sure to like, comment on the video. I read all the comments. Um, everybody's comments on the uh, Star to Seed video last week made me extra happy. Um, <laughs> you went down the rabbit hole with me. I love it. Um, and subscribe too. My goal is to get uh, these videos out every week, even if they're not on the exact days that I plan for them. But this one I thought would be fun because looking at cross stitch, um, it's such intricate work and it is such meditative work. So turning that into a tarot deck is just amazing. Okay. Cut, 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 cut. Okay. Whoa. They're slippery. Okay. Which I would rather have a slippery deck over a sticky deck. I'll I'll say that. <laughs> so I will say that. All right. Let's get these. Strengths. Whoa. Wands. Weaknesses. Okay. Questions alike. Very sunny. Look at all that, all those sunflower action. Um, questions I don't. Swords, okay. Tone, okay. How I'll help you. This is a King of Cups deck, okay. So, strengths over on the side here. I'm just writing this down. Okay, strengths, we have a five of wands. I'm just writing it in shorthand over here on the side. So five of wands. Like usually five of wands, I get fighting, but in this deck, it feels more playful. Um, teeth don't bear in this deck from what I can see. Um, because if this was actual fighting with the foxes, I would expect to see some teeth and some claws. This looks like playing. So it enjoys, um, maybe debating on what ifs. Like being the, um, the devil's advocate maybe a little bit. These are just my intuitive thoughts. Um, if anybody has thoughts on this as well, please pop them in the comments below. I will absolutely read them. Um, I will go through them. And if you have any questions, by the way, maybe we'll do a Q&A day where we go through questions. All right, two is our weaknesses. So we got the Hierophant, okay. It's interesting. Usually I consider um, seasons more wheel of fortune or wheel of the year. I've, the first deck I had was the Witch's Tarot, so they have the Wheel of the Year. Um, usually I take the Hierophant as someone who has the tools, but um, isn't going to tell you how to use them. But this has seasons involved. And it's a crow. Crow's just kind of chill. So this deck doesn't like to sit back and watch. It wants to be actively participating. Because it's versus standing alone for this card. And actively working with you for the other. Let's move this up a touch. So, you know what I mean? It, it wants to be actively a part of the foray. 
this is this is more of like a passive um not solitary overlooking like yeah it's more like an overlooking kind of role there's a word i'm looking for that i can't think of so it doesn't like that it wants to actually be a part of the decision making process that makes sense okay next We've got the sun, which is the only major. No, this is the second major that's popped up. So this is a deck that does like major life decisions. That's interesting. Um, and there's a deer, there's a fawn down here, if you can see it. So in terms of questions I like, it likes happier stuff or things that will make you happy. Um, it's an optimistic deck, which is, hey, it's a different kind of vibe from some of the negative decks that I have. My husband just got the Dark Souls Taro, um, and that is such a negative damn deck. <laughs> it's so hard for me to read it, um, because we'll sit there and we'll talk about it. And the whole deck is just doom and gloom, and then if the cards are reversed, then it's happier meanings. This is the opposite. <laughs> this is such an opposite kind of feel from that deck. And it's really interesting that we both got these uh, perspectives now. Okay, so next is Seven of Swords. Okay, the Seven of Swords is interesting because this is daffodils. Not, da not daffodils, dandelions. Um, and Seven of Swords. It shows the different stages of dandelions, which if you know anything about growing dandelions, um, depending on the stage that they are, that's how you can tell what you need for your soil. Um, it, it, because it emits different types of nutrients at each time. So, oh, this isn't, um, this is five. I'm skipping ahead. So this is the tone of the deck. My bad. Um, it's going to meet me where I'm at. This this deck um, is all about blending to what I need. And if anybody else has this deck and has interviewed it, I'd love to see if yours is different. Okay. The actual number four. <laughs> so questions they don't like is the Six of Swords. Um... Which is kind of a transition period, right? But this bee is by themselves. They're better with a hive. So they don't like it when you're like kind of lost in transition, maybe. So this deck would not help me right now. Um, <laughs> Cause I know I am actively lost in a lot of things right now. So this deck would not uh, like any of my lost questions. Six. Okay, so that's how it'll help me. So King of Cups is very much a uh, master of emotions. Um, and more in the masculine way. Masculine, master of emotions. That's interesting. So even though this is a very nurturing kind of deck, um, this is the practical friend that's uh, that's going to take your feelings into consideration, word them in the best way that you're going to hear them. But they're not going to baby you. They're just going to be honest with what you need to hear right now. I like that. Anything to keep in mind underneath? Ace of Pentacles. So this is a place for growing your foundation from the bottom up. If you are at the really at the beginning stages of creating something, of creating stability, creating a family, things like that, this is really good because it'll meet you where you're at. That Nine of Swords jumped out. Usually the Nine of Swords is I I think of the original meaning for it, which was Juliet laying in her room, drinking the Belladonna. 
um, from Romeo and Juliet. That's what that's the origin of that card. Um, so why would that jump out at me besides the fact of me having issues shuffling? <laughs> Maybe it's like, this, this is that deck for when you need a friend, when you're maybe feeling a little dramatic of what do I do now? Um, they bring you out of that funk. So we're not ingesting Belladonna and pretending to be dead. You know what I mean? We're not poisoning ourselves. Okay. So then theatrically... These two are looking at each other. This one is looking here. Like I'm looking at uh, any characters in the cards and where they're looking. So this is internal. This is external. It's good with external things, but not external act like big problems that you absolutely can already fix. It wants something that's actively having, you're having issues with on the outside. This is not an internal issue deck. Um, that seems to be the theme. Even for the tone of the deck, it, if the bee would be looking at you, if um, this is about helping you internally grow, this is externally grow. And external journeys, not internal journeys. It loves questions on the inside though, because this fawn is staring right at you. If I can pick it up. This fawn's staring at us. Right? And same thing with the swan. It's staring at us as well. And this bee is looking up here. This one's looking away. So it, it, it likes it being involved in actual things happening, not rest periods. Because Six of Swords is kind of a rest period too. Um, there's a lot of mental rest when it comes to the swords. And this is one of those times. Okay. All right. I really like this. So, um, that is the Embroidered Forest 2.0 uh, tarot. If you like this deck, I highly recommend grabbing it. Um, like I said, I got this as a gift in the mail. So thank you to whomever sent it it's absolutely beautiful and it makes me happy because of the cross stitching um you can see each individual thread and i think that helps it feel so intentional um my only thing is i wish almost that every background was the grid because this is one of those cards that you can tell the grid is in the background um this one you can tell was done on a blue grid if I get real close, you can see the etching of this was a blue grid. This, however, you can tell it was photoshopped into the background. I kind of wish it was an orange grid. And same with these. I wish these were light blue grids. This is kind of done on a fleece. That it looks like it was stitched into, like maybe a blanket. Um, I wish all of them were like that. I really like that handmade Thing about it um but that is just a tiny gripe that's all um besides that even like some of the rabbit ones some of these you can tell that it had a grid on it and i kind of want all of them to have that um i understand why we would want to do something different but like i said it's just a tiny little thing um just to give it even more of that contemplative handmade quality. This deck seems really good for bringing people out of a funk. Um, which I really, really, really do like. Because man, we get into our funks. <laughs> so I really hope you enjoyed today's video. Um, like I said, if you like more of this content, please like, comment, subscribe. I would love to have you join the family. If you want to join the free academy where I teach you how to actually read cards and you can get a printout like a really pretty printout to put into your grimoire um or your book of shadows or your tarot journal whatever you have um of a spread like this where you interview your cards and you always have it on hand i have that in the academy you just download it 
um, and it's free. So feel free to pop to the website to take a look at that. Um, and I shall see you guys in the next video. Have a fabulous day. Bye.